We'll be back with more of The Stuntman when we return right after this. I'm just going to call to uh, come in and coordinate the fights on Night of the Warrior, which has got some fabulous extended fights. And uh, I first met Lorenzo at a... Uh, at the dojo. At, a, at the dojo. Yeah. And watched him do some demonstration work. And I said, oh, well, I'll, we'll do the movie. And God, I'll have to find a double for this guy to do the movie. And Lorenzo did everything himself. He's a fabulous martial artist. And I didn't, uh, I didn't have to do much at all. He did it all himself. Well, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, elaborate on that a little bit, only because he, this man here is is, uh, is is humble, and he is the best stunt coordinator I've ever worked with, and I've been in the business 13 years. And I say that simply because Rick does things so well that it's easier for the actors and the stunt people to do their job. <laughs> Most of the time, anytime you get in a tight situation, whether it's fighting, falling, doubling an actor, is it's very hard to tease our audience nowadays or fool them. You have an experienced audience, they have an experienced eye for the camera. They can tell when we've changed the camera angle to hide the actor's face. But having Lorenzo in there for this particular movie, uh, we didn't have to do There's it. no tricks to being a good stuntman. It's all skill. Everything that you see on screen is skilled and takes hours and hours and hours of dedication and training. You can't walk up and just think that you know how to throw a screen punch. It takes a hun hundreds of punches thrown to learn the timing, to learn how to not only execute a punch, but to take one or a kick or a fall. I mean, uh, it's just an incredible accomplishment to be a working stuntman or stunt coordinator in this business because it's a highly, highly competitive uh, field. Roll them. Well, that's Hollywood. We'll be back. It's an injury and sometimes death. Reed Rondell was one of the unlucky ones. In Reed's case, it had nothing to do with his ability or anything else. You know, it was like it was pilot error. And I, I would be lying if I tell you that it didn't really hurt me deeply. And sometimes I thought, you know, geez, could I have done anything different? I mean, but from the time my sons were five years old, they had a racing license and they raced motorcycles. Uh, you know, they surfed, they dove, they were all certified divers. They worked at everything, the trampolines, all the equipment. They, they knew their job. And in this particular instance, it was after the camera was cut and they were flying back to number one and it was pilot air that stuck a skid in the ground as, you know, the, the helicopter burned and uh, we lost Reed. Reed, to me, was not indestructible because I tended him too many times when he'd trip over something or, you know, bloody nose. It didn't matter, not necessarily doing stunts, just as a kid growing up. The only good thing that comes out of, if there is such a thing, good thing comes out of a death or whatnot is the respect we get from other parts of the industry, the producers or whatnot, as far as letting us have a little bit more prep time, a little bit more respect about what we do, not being into a big rush situation where basically that's a lot of times that's what happens. It gets down to the last minute, few minutes of the day, the lights right, going bad, whatever, and they push you into doing it, and your ego usually takes over whatever, you say, oh yeah, I'll just go, I'll do it. Um, you got to be pretty secure with yourself and the way you deal with things, and if it's not right, don't do it, and don't be ashamed of it. Uh, when it is right, you do it, and you know, you're a hero, it works out perfect. Um, but I wouldn't stop doing what I'm doing for anything. Once a year, there's a day to remember Reed and to raise funds for the Reed Rondell Stunt Foundation by performing a variety of stunts and driving in this car race. Many stars turn out to acknowledge the bravery of stuntmen. I think that they are the, uh, the true heroes of today's uh, motion picture business, and I have a hard time with actors that, that claim to do, to do their own stunts, and uh, when in fact we all know who the real guys behind the danger is, you know. Dude, that's that's kind of a, that's an honor for my friend. Um, it's like working with your best friend, and it, it's not like doing stunts. It's like trying to make him look his best. And uh, with Charlie, you know, it's it's a pleasure. 
It really is. We have fun together. It's a lot of fun. Oh, I've worked with so many stuntmen over the years. They're, you know, they're great people. They're, they're really an interesting breed. And, uh, you know, I've always loved to work with them. I, I had more fun doing stunts with them than probably doing any acting that I ever did. They're crazy. They all, they all, they're all crazy in kind of the same way. They, they really believe in living on some kind of higher level, some kind of peak experience level, and they're willing to risk their lives. They do it very intelligently. They build in all the safety devices in the world, but their joy in life comes from taking things to an edge. I think that they're they're incredibly concentrated. It's, uh, I mean, they're dealing with their lives here. Uh, recently, a stunt guy just died, and it was a freak accident. Most of this stuff is quite calculated, and um, they, uh, I think that their, their their best ability is is that they're concentrated and they know exactly what they're doing, and they, they lower the variables of getting hurt. Stuntmen doing what they do best to honor. professional athlete that we do these things day in and day out we have to go to work every day and we have to be very sure of what we do uh, daredevils are, are guys that do things that they're not quite sure the outcome um, that's the old way things used to be done but because there's so many people involved on set <clears throat> sets and there's a lot of money involved and safety's a, a very heavy criteria. Um, Daredevil, we don't even like to talk about that anymore. The guys that want to do it, that's great, but we can't allow that kind of thing to happen in films. I was doing some research on uh, how people were doing fire burns prior to uh, myself getting into the movie industry, and they'd used great big, huge, huge asbestos suits. I was trying to develop a technique to do a fire burn where I really looked like a person on fire instead of a man in a big, in a big suit. Uh, they were trying to do the, a, a TV series uh, called The Torch at one particular time, and I developed this technique uh, to try to sell the idea for me to do The Torch. Uh, that series never came about, but uh, I found a method of doing a fire burn where I can do a full burn with just two sets of clothing on and look like a real person on fire instead of some person in a huge asbestos suit. Many of the top names in show business, like Chuck Norris, turned out for the culmination of this event. It's the Dar Robinson uh, Safety Award, and I believe what it represents is work in the motion picture and television business as being um, a, a stuntman involved in, in safe stunts, uh, arranging stunts that are safe, and foreseeing things that could go wrong and trying to deal with them before they actually happen, which is a big part of stunts. Uh, I think a lot of people think of stuntmen as being a daredevil, and um, it's really not that way and it shouldn't be that way because the stunt should be done safely and uh, daredevils take a lot more risks than I think we do. A lot of times we ride the edge but uh, we do it with a lot of safety involved. Yes. Oh, what? That's wonderful. That's great. A safety award in the memory of the legendary Dar Robinson and an event in honor of Reed Rondell.